Elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Mate on Saturday. Welcome to the show, lovely people. It's me, Smoke to Vape, and you're watching the SOS show live on VaporTrails.tv. I'm shouting again. Sorry about that. I have the ten. I get excited. I get excited. I hope we're all well. It's Saturday. A lot of people are probably going to be at the knees meet tonight, so that's good for the vaping community. The audience is filling up nicely in chat. So welcome, welcome to Saturday and welcome to the SOS show with me, your host, Smoke to Vape. Got loads of good stuff on the show. Tonight, I've had a busy day today. Saturday is always busy, and, and when it's show day as well, I sort of want Saturday to be a bit like a Sunday, really, but um, never, never the case. <sighs> but I was vaping in a theatre today, in public, in wide open, surrounded by loads and loads of people, and um, because my 11 year old son, uh, well, he's 11 in April, but um, he had his first audition. Now, don't think because I'm a pushy parent, but he, he wanted to, he saw on the internet or on the, in the new local newspaper that they were doing this Dr. Zeus 48-hour theatre challenge. So he wanted to be part of it because he's done a little bit of school drama stuff and, and he went along for the audition. So his first audition, I was a proud dad vaping away there in the corner one person did ask me what I was doing, I explained, and then they sort of went, hmm, and then wandered off. So, um, what was I using? I was a little using a little mini uh, ego type thing, little tiny one, and um, a stardust, and, and, you know, stealth vaping, yes, I wasn't pluming it, but, uh, yeah, and, and I was using some of the juice that I'm going to review tonight. So that brings me on to the content of tonight's show and you will see on here I have got an Igo L. And if you've been watching my shows, um, you will know I've got my... I'm just going to have some beer, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's left by the way, you were asking. Other beers are available. Um, yes, uh, Igo L, rebuildable, dripper interesting I've been into on my rebuildable diaries in the past I've been into the uh, stainless steel wicks the uh, the high value ones and the low value ones and the mid-range ones this is like a 10 quid dripper so coming up first on tonight's show um, I have got my rebuildable diary number four now this interesting little device has led me into several other things that you'll see later on in the show as well, so keep watching. Hi, Andy here with another rebuildable diary. This time it's looking at the Igo L, a fantastic little dripper and I'm not a big dripping fan but I saw a couple of videos on YouTube and I thought, oh that looks interesting, I will give it a go and here's how to wick it. Now I'm a little bit sad doing this video because let me just give you a a quick vapor demonstration on this thing. This is working perfectly and I'm going to take it all to bits and show you how to put it back together again. You will agree plumes of vapor and it's really 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 good with the flavor as well. Use your silica wick and let's get going putting it together it's really quite simple and on the desk you will see what you need to put it together and compared to a stainless steel wicked atomizer tank system there's not a lot really that you need um, you can, oh, I don't need two screwdrivers so we can get get rid of that straight away so you can see how simple the uh, device is um, 
you can see the coil of silica is within the circle of the the body of the device so let me just first of all slacken those off and then that just pops out there like that and then that's ready to re-wick bye lovely wick you served me well so here's the silica wick here that's not the length you need you only need about you need about that much not a lot at all um, too much and it won't fit in too little and it probably won't wick right but uh, you know depends on how much you want to drip really because the the amount of wick determines how many how many drips it will hold and and it will keep it will act as a reservoir of juice basically so I have found that the best way to cut silica wick as many others have said as well is with a pair of nail clippers and you can see there that that's made a pretty good cut and there we have it the silica wick cut to length right so now in terms of how we're going to configure this piece of silica it all needs to stay in the ring of the I go L uh, so the top cap goes on smoothly and nicely so if we have a look here we're going to have it we're going to have it that way round um, so those are wound round the device there but I think I've found an interesting way of ensuring that the silica wick will stay put and you don't have to spend hours trying to thread knit those silica wicks through a little gap underneath the coil all will become clear in a few seconds I'm just going to cut the um, length of wire double the wick over like so and then I'm going to grab one of these just pick your favorite one and double it over again so you've got that sort of configuration you've basically got three pieces of wick there and it's important just to save having to trim it later that they all line up at the end that will just mean that you don't have to trim the silica wick when it's actually in the device so we squish those together as much as we can being careful not to unwind the silica take our nichrome wire I tend to cut off more than I need and then just pick a nice middle point and then wind it round here so spread those coils out a little bit bring that one round and I think that's it it's important that the side with the most, most space on it is where you put the the length of silica and I just plonk that in there like that Time for the screwdriver, attach this to the post and go that side on the inside of the post, pull that wire tight, drop that down, screw it in, that should be secured. Now this might just take a little bit of adjustment now, uh, just grabbing that, pulling it up. We've got that gap between there in there all I'm going to do is take that trailing bit of silica wick post that through that hole that'll do for now then I'm going to trim off these uh, bits of surplus wire getting as close to the posts as I can just a pair of needle nose pliers just to pull that through and that does that keeping all that wick inside the body of the IGO L so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach it to a device and just test to see how it runs um, just checking that those coils aren't touching and that looks good to go 
Right, so a little blow, and uh, that's all pretty much ready to give its first test. Check my coils, and they're all spaced out reasonably well. The wick is sort of all tucked in there and out of the way of the O-rings and the outer ring of the uh, IGOL. So I'm going to put this on the lava tube, and I'm not going to dry burn it. I'm going to drop some e-liquid on it and this is Griswold whiskey cream I think that's ready to go so let's give it a test burn and um, see if it works seems to be working. Line the hole up with the coil, pop in a drip tip, just drop the voltage a little bit, 5 volts. Not bad for first go, it will bed in and I think I put an awful lot of juice on there, so it will warm up believe me. is improving compared to a stainless steel wicked tank system I would say if you're if you've bought one and you're not winning with it I would say get a rebuildable dripper it, it helps build the confidence <laughs> it really does Fantastic flavour straight away, and I made that. That's the the lasting sort of feeling you get is, uh, I, I I made it and it's making vapour and it tastes lovely. No burnt taste, no um like new coil taste to it straight away. Bang, you're into tasty vapour. Wow. This is the device that made me think. You know what? I could be a dripper if they're all this good. I could give it a go for a whole day. It's given me an idea for a VT. Mm. Keep watching. Let's put it up to 5.5. It's lovely. That is metering out at 1.9. White out. Nice. The EVIC has decided to work. That is looking good. That is looking very good. So really quick, really easy result straight away. Very little faffing. Silica wick. It's sort of the the slightly unpopular cousin now to stainless steel. But if you are struggling with stainless steel, give silica wick in your rebuildable a go and you might find it good. If you are an experienced wicker or coiler, then there's no reason why you shouldn't give this a go. This is a really good little dripper, and it's less, I think it's about a tenner. Amazing. Love it. If we have a look now, this is this has had a little bit of a breaking in. You can see that the coils are darker, and they've created a little black spot on the wick. And if I give it a burn, you'll see it chucking out the vapor lovely stuff and when I have it on the device and flat and I can't show you that in the close-up camera because you can't keep it flat because of the length of the device I really do put a lot in there I do put masses in there amazing clouds of vapor and the throat hit on this is amazing. I mean, I am running at this this at um, 4.5 volts on a 1.9 ohm coil I made myself, and it's uh, 11 watts, as high as it'll go. Hitting like a steam train. Honestly, lovely. Whew. 
It's 20 milligrams. It feels like 36. Oh, almost got the nick ups on 20 milligram juice. Really, really nice stuff. Griswold's whiskey cream. I'm sure it hasn't got whiskey in it. That's sure. Really, ooh, lovely. So that's the Igo L, available from lots of different places. I got mine from Toby from iVapor. I bought it for £10 or thereabouts. So a really, really good DIY dripping atomizer. If you've lost, lost your confidence with uh, Genesis style, or you can't get the hang of it, go back to silica. There's no shame in it. It's really good. This is pumping out loads of flavor, loads of vapor, and it's really, really good. Right, so back to me, live on VaporTrails.tv. Oh! Yes, so the I go L, and it has been treating me well. I'm a poet. Um, let's go and have a look at what you get when you purchase it. Um, this is what you get in the box. Obviously, you get the I go L as well. You do not get a drip tip. Um, but you get everything else. So um, in that little plastic baggie, uh, you get length of silica wick, two black O-rings and a mini screw, which believe you me is quite useful because yeah, they are teeny tiny and they do uh, tend to ping across the desk now and again. And having a magnetic screwdriver is useful when you're putting it together. But I will say that it's it's a great little device and I've now switched from the Irish cream because I did a whole review on it late coming up later um, and um, which you'll see as VT um, but I've got raw vapor in here now um, serenity and it is it is really working I'm just gonna put a couple of drips on it and this is the same wick and coil and one thing to note that I was using it on the lava tube and someone in chat, uh, Mark Shaw, said his um, lava tube isn't musical. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Mine plays music when I take a puff on it. But hey, what are you going to do? Um, yes, so the lava tube is limited to wattage and if you put a low resistance coil that you've wound yourself on it, it won't give you the full oomph. And I can clearly demonstrate this by putting this on a... Uh, an ego battery, uh, a variable volt ego battery, and giving it a go, and you'll see. Beautiful vapor from this little monkey. And this, this ego variable voltage is not musical. Sorry, because it's live. <laughs> Um, let me just go to this camera and show you the the what these things look like once they've been running. And it's worth saying that really it's tricky to get off this top cap um, if it's not on a device because um, Thomas in chat asked if the top cap was loose, and it so isn't. It's uh, it ah there we go. So if we look in there, you will see that that has seen some action and it is quite dark in there and let's just press the button because that's a cool shot yes it works very well I have had no trouble with leaking those um, those o-rings really do hold everything in there obviously when you filled it you do get a little bit of residue you know on your fingers and stuff when you take it apart but um, this Dripper really has inspired me with the confidence that this is a viable option to vape all day. So, coming up in part two, t -t -t two uh, you will see my Dripper's diary. Um, anyway, see you after the break. I vape.
Elevator Elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Mate on Saturday. Yay! You see, I've just been puffing on the I go L. And uh, just in while that was, the ad break was playing out, I just got a message on our Skype chat. Um, and uh, it's from the Knees Meet. So, hello if you're watching at the Knees Meet. Wish I could be there. We're having a great time here, but I'm sure you're having an even better time at the uh, the vape meet that's happening in the Northeast. So, hello. It's good to know you're, some of you are watching up there. And, um, yes. Let's get on with the show, shall we? The iGoL really has made me think that I could survive a day with dripping. Now, you know, I saw some comments in chat as well whether um, you can put stainless steel in it, and I haven't tried it yet, but hey, maybe that'll be a rebuildable diary yet to come. But uh, yes, I'm impressed. And for 10 quid, you know, I noticed in chat as well that someone was saying that, you, that it's difficult to get a reliable dripper in Europe. And I would say I've 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 bought a couple that are probably lesser quality than this, and this is the first one that I thought you know I'm going to spend some time with it and get some quality vapor out of it, and it's been working a treat. As you can see, so that brings me neatly to my next VT, which is well you'll see, but it inspired me to try and spend a day as a dripper. Okay, so many of you know I am not a dripper. I am a cartomizer fan. Dripping refers to putting juice e-liquid on a an atomizer, drop by drop as you require it, three or four, and you vape it. I do it occasionally when I've got a new juice in and I want to test it, but for me a, a tank system with juice that's going to last me all day is the solution. Um, so when I got my iGo L, um, I th I, I've, I think I've actually discovered a, a dripping atomizer that I can get on with. I vaped it all last night at my desk. Now the question is, can I get through a day dripping? So I'm catchily calling this video diary Day Drippers. And off we go. So I've got my bag of Griswold juice here, plus one trip hammer. Um, and I am looking for the whiskey cream. There it is. So obviously it's a pretty bad idea to drip and drive. Not just a bad idea, it's, it's... Don't do it. Don't do it kids, don't drip and drive. So the thing with the iGo L is that it's got quite a lot of wick in it and the seals are really good at the bottom which means you can you can really soak the wick and it should see me to work if not i have got my trusty old vision on an e on a on an auto battery so again i'm just going to line up the air hole with the wick like so and that should do it. And I'm off. Got my bridge money, my phone's charging, and I got my e-cig. So that's on a um, lava tube at five volts. Ooh. So whiskey cream. It, it tastes like whiskey with cream in it. Um, 25 milligrams, really nice throat hit, which really works with an alcoholic flavor. It's like having whiskey and cream. I haven't had whiskey and cream, but if I did, I would imagine it tastes like that, and, and uh, this juice does. So I think the reason why I haven't been a dripper in the past is because I found dripping atties to be quite leaky if you overfill them. Um, generally, using one has been, uh, you know, you don't know whether you're going to get e-liquid in your bag or it's going to squish juice all over the place and uh, I, I can't be doing with that, you know. I, if I put e-liquid in something, I want it to stay in the device and 
and be able to pick it up and vape it. Um, I don't mind the idea of dripping. Uh, it's just the convenience, and certainly on a long trip, uh, it doesn't work in the car, clearly. Uh, there are a few devices out there and that have been that have tried to aid dripping, but like the Vape Mate, if you remember that, um, a, a, a bottle fed squidgy device, I think we called it on Vapor Trails TV, uh, the, the Crop Duster, it makes the device look a little bit unwieldy. Uh, I think Mr. Kitson really liked it, it took a little bit of getting used to. But the iGo L really does take the question work out of um, out of dripping. It's it's very straightforward just to fill that wick up with as much juice as it'll hold. And even if you overfill it slightly, it, it seems like a really solid sealed unit. Now my temptation is to check how much juice I've got through so far, but I'm not going to. I'm going to wait until I get that slightly burnt taste and then just put it down and switch back to the, um, the vision on the auto battery. But um, I'm nearly halfway there and, and, and no burnt taste yet. So I'm approaching Clifton Suspension Bridge and it, that's my nearly there point. So, uh, let's see how this is getting on now. Lovely. Still feels as though it's fresh. Still feels as though it's got lots of juice in it. So the rest of the day is pretty much spent in close proximity to a desk. So, uh, that should be pretty straightforward. Bristol City Council have just put in parking meters all around the city and all around the BBC. So it's either resident parking or metered and to park for a day it now costs about six quid. So the net result of that is I've got to park miles away and walk in basically. The furthest I've had to park away is about two miles. Absolutely crazy. So it's uh, nearly 20 past nine. I've got to get in for 9.30. And uh, I've probably got about a 15 minute walk ahead of me if I'm lucky. So I work in Bristol, but I've had to park in sort of Spain. Um, I have to walk in. So I made it to work and still treating me well. Uh, still on the first fill as well, and it's um, 10.30. Haven't been vaping a lot, but it's still working. Annoyingly, I can't find my whiskey cream juice. I thought I put it in my bag, but I might have left it in the car. I hope I left it in the car. So I've got another selection of juices here, so I'll be cracking through those in a minute, but this is treating me well. I have noticed one annoying thing is that it only works on the uh, lava tube at the moment, so I think there's a problem with the connector, because it didn't work on the Darwin last night, and it, it's not working on the bolt. So, frustrating. So I can only go up to well, I can get up to six volts, so it's fine. Lovely. So, a day as a dripper. How did that go? Well, I think the easiest way is to show you. I'm on the stardust. Why? Well, it, it was working until about two o'clock. Um, after lunch, all the juices I had with me 
with 24 milligrams. Um, in here I've got a 36 milligram RY6 and I started, no matter how much I was vaping on the dripper, I was starting to get that feeling that I needed to vape. And that made this, made that feeling go away. So once I had this, I pretty much stuck with it and vaped pretty much half a tank. Um, so I am not converted to dripping just yet, but what it's demonstrated is that people are different, people get on with different things, and for me, there are devices which work well at home, and devices and atomizer combinations that work well at work. And that is part of the journey of being a vapor, is finding your thing. And for me, uh, at work, convenience is my thing, and also higher milligram uh, to get that nicotine fix. So, uh, thinking back to that discussion we had on the uh, VT talk the other night, I've got to think that that must be the reaction of a, a, a nicotine addict that I couldn't just use another device and get through the day. I knew what I wanted and I went to it. If I'd ever only had the dripper with me, I think I would be in a different frame of mind at the moment, um, meaning my mood. So, yeah, I'm a happy addict. So this has been a useful experience. Um, I couldn't film as much as I wanted to at work because of obvious reasons, I'm at work. And, uh, yeah, very interesting, interesting. I might try it again, but with high nick juice. And I think, it's not the device, I don't think, it was the juice. So I might give it a go again and feedback. So, now I'm going to drive home. And back to me, live on Vaportrails.tv. Smooth jazz. Yeah, it was interesting that. Hello, chat, by the way. Hello, hello. You will see some people over there who are at the knees meet. Hello, knees meet. Um, yes, and interesting comments in chat, mostly about parking. Parking is annoying. Um, but that did really make me think about, uh, you know, I've tried... I, I considered going through a day on zero milligrams, and I tried to go through a day using a dripper i'm sure if i up the milligram then i would probably have made it through the day but it is that combination once you find your level of nicotine and your device of choice any change is tricky now that neatly leads me on to my next section and anybody who's watched the show prepare for angry andy Although Clive Bates said to Dave Dawn that we are making great progress, don't stop now. Write to them, go to the website, type in your postcode, it will tell you who your MP and MEP are. You type in your thoughts and reasons why you think the EU regulations are going to be bad for you. And we can keep it going, people. We're doing a great job. Keep it up. Keep it up. If you haven't written... Don't think other people will. They are, but the more people who do means that you're part of the club. Be part of the club. Be part of the people who are trying to stop this craziness from occurring. <sighs> I'm getting less angry the more I do it, so that's good. But I'm still active about trying to sort it out. And please write to them. Right, so now I'm going to do this and then we're going to come back and have something else. Oh, there's a big insect flying, fly, flying around. Mosquito? Surely the cold weather and anyway. Yes. 
So, uh, just going back to some things I saw in chat there. Uh, Jan Sufin. Jan Sufin? Jan Sufin. Jan Sufin says, Silica is better for fruit and stainless is good for tobacco flavours. And I'd have to go with that, really. But I am finding the silica wick in this to be great. Anyway, so um, we are joined by some people from the Knees Meet and hopefully they're watching. And there is another exciting thing. The Vape Fest is coming up. And that is occurring on the 17th of August this year, and I will be attending. I've missed a couple, and I've missed the big ones, you know, the big jam-packed ones. So I'm looking forward to that, and um, I might be bringing some friends with me. That's all I'm going to say for now, but I might be. So, uh, yeah, there we are. Looking forward to that a great deal. And now, smoothly, I'm going to go into the next bit of VT. And, oh, I promised Cat I was going to put this on when I did it. Ha, so I've got it on now. There you go, just for you, cat. The hat. Um, yes, I've been digging through the archives um, on the, on on the internet, and I've found some interesting footage um, that it, from the 1950s, 60s, and later in the series beyond that as well, of um, Propaganda films, I, best, I, I guess that's the, from both sides of the argument, from both the anti-tobacco and the pro-tobacco. There are, there are lots of stuff out there that people have said before, and it's stuff we're saying now. So here you go. Here's my next instalment of Blast from the Past. in the fertile coastal regions of southeastern United States is the heart of our tobacco country, Tobacco and USA. With moisture provided by gentle rains from the Atlantic and warmed and nurtured by the sparkling southern sun, these colorful tobacco plants ripen and mature to provide mankind with one of the real comforts and luxuries of life, a satisfying and relaxing smoke. The Old Virginia Tobacco Company, home of famous Humbar cigarettes, the menthol carbonated cigarette, is one of the many big producers in Tobaccoland, USA. Let's go behind the scenes where we see the Old Virginia Tobacco Company in a state of excitement. <laughs> Can't you all watch where you're going, boy? I, Miss Calhoun, am on important business for the big boss himself. These are the latest figures on the campaign to make every man, woman, and child in the whole country a cigarette smoker. On every billboard, radio, and television, on every newspaper and magazine. I want ads in the Boy Scout magazine and every college paper. Full page ads in color. <laughs> uh, and let's not forget the soldier boys and sailors, especially those in the hospitals. Send them all free cigarettes. I want to help those poor boys on their way. Oh. And speaking of boys, let's not forget the young people. Get ads in every high school paper, their yearbooks, and their weekly reader. Give those kids something for their busy little minds, I always say. And another thing, we need a new slogan. JB, you know our competitor who says their cigarettes take you away? Well, I've got a better slogan. Now get this. Humbars take you out of this world. Now get out there and sell cigarettes. Yes, sir, JB. It's Humbar time. Time for America's favorite cigarette. Big Tom Tink was burned by. Hey folks, while we're waiting here, I just wanted to tell you that Humbers are a tinkering man's cigarette.
This is your on-the-spot reporter with another unrehearsed interview to find out which cigarette America prefers best. Oh, by the way, sir, which cigarette do you prefer? Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, that's 100% for Humbers. Remember, folks, Humber cigarettes take you out of this world. Wait, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 stop, oh, help, whoa, hey, 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 help, 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 help. Look at that chart, look at that chart, and look at that rosin sales. Why, we'll have every man, woman, and child between the ages of 10 and 90 smoking humbars in this country in the next few years. You know, Dad, from all I've been able to understand, Cigarette smoking is really bad for people. In fact, several of the prominent doctors up on the campus say that it's undermining the health of the nation. Nonsense, sir. Nonsense. Oh, of course, we get a few complaints now and then, but uh, we got people who will swear by what we claim about cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> of course, we're getting a little less smoking from those people who are afraid of heart trouble, lung cancer, the like, but. If they quit smoking, smokers is just like streetcars. There'll be another one along in a few minutes. Just what is it in cigarettes that's so dangerous? I know about nicotine, of course. Oh, just the ordinary things that you find around the house. <laughs> Tars, arsenic, carbon monoxide, <laughs> formaldehyde. Formaldehyde? You mean embalming fluid? Oh, no, not enough to hurt you, son. Just enough to tickle your throat. Remember, there's a lot of satisfaction in a good smooth smoke. <laughs> Satisfies the tobacco craving. Tobacco craving? <laughs> what you really mean is you've got them hooked. Mm, not so loud, son. That hurts. Say, what they teaching you up at that Yankee University? Bad manners? Dad, I don't mean to be impolite, but look, if cigarette smoking's so bad for people, why do we keep it undercover? Well, son, you may be a great quarterback and a five beta kappa, but they didn't teach you much. This is a big business, son. And if we scared them, do you think they'd smoke? Why, boy, we've got a big responsibility to our stockholders, our tobacco growers, and our employees. We've just got to sell cigarettes. Even if it means not telling the public what suckers they are? Not so harshly, son. Let, let's just say that we uh, use a little whitewash over the rough spots. <laughs> you know, uh, sort of tell them half-truths. But we're conspiring against the public and getting them to do something by trickery and deceit. Don't rile me, boy. Don't rile me. J.B., J.B., we've finally done it. Watch this. Nothing's coming through the filter. Do you hear that, son? Nothing coming through the filter. That boy's a genius, just a plain... What do you mean, nothing? That's right, J.B. Nothing. Not even smoke. <laughs> there, there, Waldo. Don't worry. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, one of these days you'll come up with a filter that will satisfy all these anti-smoking campaigns. Thanks, Waldo. <laughs> But, Dad, I thought that ad said that your new filter filled it out in nicotine and tars and all that stuff. It did, son. But then we had to increase the amount of strong tobacco to get the taste back. Yeah. So the filter really isn't any good. But it does sell cigarettes. Is that all we're interested in, Dad? Just selling cigarettes? Now, this here chart shows the rise of cigarette smoking in the last ten years. Here we see that lung cancer has increased at the same ratio as uh, cigarette. Oops, a wrong chart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
then all those figures that show smoking and cancer really do have a relationship. Smoking could cause cancer. That's a nasty, dirty thing to say, son. A lovely, pure white cigarette causing cancer. It gets me right here. <coughs> but I mean it, Dad. Does cigarette smoking cause cancer? <coughs> well, <coughs> they say it does. We say it don't. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, what's going on here? Come on, baby. I'll bet you didn't play this with Dad, Manning. Now get in there, honey, and fight. Nice and close now. That's it. Hold it. See me, son? Listen, Dad, about those photographs. You're not going to use me. No, <laughs> don't you all worry about that, son. I've taken care of that. No, sir. <laughs> we ain't going to use them. No. I may be a rough old tobacco man, son, but uh, as for your not smoking, I'm right proud of you. Uh, this ain't for publication. Frankly, I wouldn't smoke for a million dollars. <laughs> Welcome back. Right, so um, in an effort not to run over this week, what I'm going to do is going to go to a juice review, and I've got it on the desk just here, and it's uh, Moondrop. Um, it's an interesting juice I was sent by uh, vaporworld.co.uk, and um, yes, I tried it out. So once again, I took to my trusty old Saab, and hit the road and uh, here's a very very quick and you'll see why VT well this morning you find me in my car but not driving because I've broken down. Massive plumes of smoke. Uh, 
the Saab might be dead. Waiting for the recovery service, got the flashes on. Didn't smell very good and it looked like it was on fire. Got on a plus point. It's a lovely sunny day. I'm vaping. So while I'm waiting for the recovery truck, I'm vaping this morning. Moondrop. Straight up 36 milligrams, PG75, VG25 from vaporworld.co.uk. Um, I believe this is the one that's got alkaloids in it from uh, tobacco. So it's definitely got a familiar taste to the, the one with the bullet. Oh, my brain's gone. I'm stuck in a car in a lay-by. I can't think of juice names, but this is nice. 36 milligrams going to get me through this. So, uh, Paula, thanks for sending me this to try. Little did you know it would save me in a moment of stress and anxiety. Yeah, it's a um, an accurate tobacco flavour. Again, it's one of those that tastes like the smell of a new packet of cigarettes. You get that from alkaloid juices. The 25% VG is giving nice fly. Oh, my heart's not in this review. I'm stuck in a lay-by. The juice is nice. Tell you what, I'll leave this here. I'll wait until the pickup truck gets here. And um, I'll catch up on this juice live. Because it is worth it. It's nice stuff. 36 milligrams. Good stuff. Um, but, you know, stuck in a lay-by. In a broken car. Which I sadly think is probably the last time you'll see the Saab. Mm. It's costing me a fortune fixing it. I like it, I love it. I love this car. <sighs> yeah. Saab's dead. Well, it's in the garage. It, it has a history of not dying, the Saab. I thought the head gasket had gone, so I left it parked on the driveway. And um, I got a mobile mechanic to come around to test it all out. And he said, well, if I was... And he started it, started first time, once he got a battery on it. And uh, he said, well, if you want to sell it to me, I'll buy it. And it ran for about another eight or nine months. And now this. But, you know... Keep watching, you might see it again, who knows? It's just whether, you know, the cost of the car. Oh, I do like that car a lot. Anyway, so back to the juice. My heart is now in it. I've been, I vaped it all day today, actually. Um, and it's a good juice. It reminds me a lot, and I can think of the name and chat spotted it as well. It's very reminiscent of El Toro. Um, but I would say it's got a more, let me vape it and I'll tell you. It's got, it's got a more, not nutty, no, not nutty. It's got a much more sort of woody flavour. Um, it's, it's a little bit floral and at 36 milligrams, really good throat hit. It's a very, very nice flavour. Um, let me just read what came on, the, let me just read what came on the, pack that it came in and it's it's just here let's read it together shall we actually i'm gonna to have to turn let me go to this camera because otherwise i'll have to turn upside down then you won't be able to read it or i won't be able to read it it's one or the other uh the moon drop line of e-liquid is made in new york using usa nicotine and usd grade ingredients straight up is their signature real tobacco flavor by adding pure tobacco leaf extracts this offers a whole new experience for tobacco lovers and for those new to switching over very nicely worded as well switching we like that and um yes alkaloids now i don't know the science about alkaloids so expect that to see in future shows and future projects and um yes but 
Overall, 36 milligrams, and I have got a whole range of these juices she's kindly sent me as well, which are all for the Moondrop range, and they're very, very interesting. Now, um, let me just give another toot and see what you think. Yeah, very reminiscent of El Toro. Uh, obviously, I couldn't get El Toro in 18 milligrams. I think that was the strongest they did. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, that's the one that I got and the one that I ordered. This is 36. I think other juices they stock go higher than that. Um, let me just see what I've got here. Yes, I've got a 42 milligram juice as well. So... This is the Moondrop range. Let me just show you the bottle. Let me give you the guided tour. Um, where is it? There it is. It's straight up. Nice bottle and a nice sort of colour to the uh, the warning label. A nice colour to the juice. Um, good. And it is 75% VG and 25% PG. PG. Oh, 25% VG. 70 whew. I got worried then I got worried then but no that's good that's good so that combination for me I think is just about the right amount of VG and I am growing to appreciate VG a little bit more because if you don't you know why I don't like VG I won't go into it right so let's um let's think about what, how much time we've got left? We've got two minutes left. It would be foolish of me to try and do something else. So um, I'm just going to sit and vape and drink my beer and, and say thank you for all of you watching and especially if you're at the knees meet. I wish I could have been there but you know it's a bit too far away and it's Saturday and my son had his theatre thing. I wish I could have been there. Maybe another time but looking forward to vape fest and um, yeah this juice also is a very good if you like tobacco flavors it goes very nicely with the old beer mm. and comments in chat have said as well I've or uh, the, the team has pointed me in the direction of comments about uh, that you want some sort of juice beer combo thing so that's that's coming up as well i will have some more recipes they will be slightly shorter than the last one i appreciate i watched that one back and i appreciate it was a little bit long anyway so we're running into the last minute i'm determined not to run over tonight <laughs> yeah uh yes so there we go um i'm just uh trying desperately to hit that right okay yes good so uh, let me just pop over to chat. Let me thank you all for watching. Please tune in tomorrow night, 9pm, for Dave Kitson's marvellous tackle box. Um, lots more stuff coming up, and you'll be able to read them in the end credits. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. See you next time. Bye. I Vapor and I Vapor Elixir proudly sponsors Smoke to Paint on Saturday.